How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to another nightly review. Today, we will be going over the Golden Knights' 3 nothing victory over the Colorado Avalanche in their fourth game against each other and the Golden Knights' 16th game of the season. The Golden Knights are now 11-4-1, so they're doing pretty well. Um, this game really restored my faith a little bit. Because the last two games, and even the one nothing shutout against Colorado, I was thinking, Colorado looks like the better team in most of these games. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, before the game, Peter DeBoer decided, we gotta fix these lines. I made the suggestion in my last video, but I didn't know he'd go to this extent. The first line was Alex Tuck, Chandler Stevenson, and Mark Stone. Tuck and Stevenson on the same line. That amount of speed. Oh. Pacioretty, Glass, and Smith as the second line. So Glass getting a bit of a bigger role. Uh, Smith, had a, Smith had an okay game. So did Pacioretty. That line, that line looked okay. Uh, Marcheseau and Carlson and Wah. So that's a bit of an interesting line. And can Marcheseau and Carlson looked way better last night than they have in, like, five games. Uh, then the, the the fourth line was Carrier, Colasar, and Reeves. Shockingly, Car Carrier played after the elbow on Landis Gog, but I guess the league must have looked at it, so... Hey. Um, but the fourth line with Colasar as the center looked much, much better. They were actually, like, in the offensive zone and doing half decently, you know, defensively. In uh, the defensive pairs, they changed them up as well. We finally got the Theodore and Petrangelo pairing. They look pretty good. Uh, Martinez and White Cloud was the second pairing. White Cloud and Martinez can be an excellent, excellent shutdown pair because those two are so good defensively. And last night, they were incredible together. Uh, and then Hagen Coglin. So no Nick Holden. And can I say, Coglin looks pretty good. Coglin looks pretty good, and it kind of makes me think mm, maybe Braden McNabb could be used as a trade piece to help out the bottom six, and maybe uh, maybe get something else too. Uh, but yeah, let's get let's get into the game. Shockingly, the first big chance of the game goes to Ryan Reeves. He takes a big slapper from the slot, and it's saved by Philip Grubauer. Uh, and, and about 10 minutes in, the Golden Knights were the better team. The Avalanche had one shot on goal for about 14 minutes in the first period. Uh, Colorado did get a scramble in front of Flurry though. Uh, and the fourth line looked really, really good up to that point. Uh, JT Comfort tripped Nick Haig, and on that power play, Marsh so did get a chance. He tried to go five-hole on Grubauer, but Grubauer would stop it. Uh, Flurry then made a big save on a deflection. And then Flurry robbed Kadri with the uh, the windmill save that will be on the highlights for the next week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was really it for the first period. The Golden Knights outshot them ten to eight, and then it was nothing, nothing. But the Golden Knights did look like the better team in that period, and this game is definitely the best game the Golden Knights have played against the Avalanche thus far this season. Uh, Flurry made some good early saves, uh, but then Connor Timmins tripped. Max Pacioretty, and on that power play, uh, Carlson gets it to Tuck, and Tuck just splits the defense, goes right in, and gets the breakaway goal for the first uh, power play goal, I believe, the Golden Knights have scored on the Avalanche this season. And not only that, but uh, from Carlson and Petrangelo. So Carlson and Petro both get on the board, two guys who kind of needed to. And Alex Tuck, if he keeps up this pace, man... It's, it's so crazy to think that Alex Tuck just goes dormant for at least before this season. Because this season, Tuck's been pretty decently consistent. At least more consistent than he was last year. Now, I can understand last season because he was injured a lot. And hopefully that stops now. Because Alex Tuck, when he's consistent, when he's on, is a fantastic player. And the fact that they've given him some more ice time, uh, I think is really going to help him. Uh, but... Yeah, then Flurry, Kale McCarr passed it right over to Kadri uh, at a one-timer, and Flurry stopped it. Flurry robbed Kadri again. Uh, then uh, it's Alex Tuck again from Mark Stone, 
And Tuck just uses his speed to score. Like, man, for a big dude, and I mean tall, he can skate. And he's got some hands. So, yeah. Um, I believe they gave an assist to Stone on that goal. But the real assist is to Bowen Byram, because that's not a goal that's going in without him. Uh, it was a bit of a it was a it was a tough goal through the avalanche. Basically, Tuck just did a little dinky backhander at Grubauer. Grubauer made the save, but the rebound goes right off of Bowen Byram's skate and right into the back of the net. And I felt bad un until another part of this game where uh, Byram decided to try to do a little dirty play. But yeah. Uh, then there was a scramble in front of Grubauer, so the Golden Knights kept pushing after that second goal. Reeves got another good chance, uh, and then Marcheseau gets his from Carlson and Haig. Carlson with another good pass to Marcheseau, who's just right in the slot and puts one right five hole under Grubauer. And Fleury kept standing tall. And that was really it for the second period. The Golden Knights are up 3 nothing after the second, so they scored all their goals in the second period. And they outshot the Avalanche 12-10. So they finally started getting good chances on Grubauer. And listen, Grubauer, in previous seasons, he's never had this safe percentage. Ever. And it's kind of showing that it's more Colorado's defense as to why he has that safe percentage. Because if you can get chances on Grubauer, he's not going to make the saves that Flurry will. Or Vasilevsky will. Or... Uh, Hellebuck will. So there's there's a lot of Grubauer. Grubauer is young, so he does have the talent to get there. But uh, we this might his save percentage might be higher than it it should be. Is what I'm saying. Uh, early in the third period, there is uh so Stone. Gets it over to Petrangelo. Petrangelo right in front. Grubauer just barely makes the save, and the puck goes off of the post. Uh, that was the best chance for the Knights in the third period. Uh, then Theodore did trip Miko Rantanen. They really only had one good chance, and that was a Makar slap shot from the point, and Flurry made the stop. Um, and it was a really, really good penalty kill. But then after that, so Marjusso did hit Byram. And he got away with it. It probably should have been a penalty. But uh, Bowen Byram then tried to flatten Alex Petrangelo in open ice with interference. Petrangelo's nowhere near the puck. And that's that's a bit of a... that You gotta call that. <laughs> Which Petrangelo did not get flattened. But yeah, uh, the, the game was getting chippy at that point. Uh... Off of that, uh, Flurry stopped uh, a Devon Taves in front, uh, and then Grubauer stopped Tuck. Uh, then Flurry committed robbery again, uh, and with about a minute, a uh, minute and a half left, uh, Calvert and Reeves get a little bit of a dinky roughing call. Uh, it probably should have been roughing, but it's, it's a little bit of a call. But that made it four on four for the last minute and a half, and. Nothing, no really big chances for either team. Just the Golden Knights really buckled down in the third period. Uh, the Avalanche, the other than the Taves chance and uh, Flurry's big robbery, the Avalanche really didn't have any good chances other than those two plays. Um, the Golden Knights beat the Avalanche three nothing. So they get the split out of Colorado. That's what I said that they need to do. The Golden Knights need to go at least 500 against Colorado this season if they want to be first place in the division. And they need to be above 500 against St. Louis. So, yeah. And St. Louis right now, after they lost 3 nothing to Jonathan Quick and the Kings, like, okay, I like the Kings. They're, they're one of my top three teams. But right now, the Blues losing to the Kings, and not only that, but getting shut out to Jonathan Quick. Like, I love Quick, but, yeah. Anyway. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche did outshoot the Golden Knights 15 to six. The Golden Knights really weren't, didn't need to get chances in this period. That's why the shots are so different. But the Golden Knights beat them in almost every other type of play. Other than takeaways, the Golden Knights had less giveaways. They had more hits. 
They had a better face-off percentage. They, less, they had less penalty minutes. The Golden Knights controlled play in this game, and that's what you want to see. You want to see the Golden Knights come out and, and take a game like this. And not only that, but take it in a convincing way. Uh, they won. Uh, Colorado did outshoot them overall in the game, 34-28. to 28. So before the third period, Colorado only had 19 shots. Uh, but and the Golden Knights had 22. So the Golden Knights were outplaying them when when it was a game. So the Golden Knights were outplaying Colorado when it was a game. But yeah, uh, that was the Golden Knights' first ever win in Denver in Ball Arena. Oh, you should have just given Pepsi back the rights because Pepsi Center sounds a lot better than Ball Arena. Anyway, uh, my three stars uh, would be Flurry, Alex Tuck, and William Carlson. Uh, another notable thing uh, about this game is that I got my uh, first salty Twitter comment. So, yeah, uh, I was quite entertained. Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially at the point in the game when he, it was about halfway through the third that I, uh, I posted that tweet and, uh, some, someone must have been a little salty. So, uh, thank you. You, I now know that I have, uh, officially made it now that I'm getting salt comments. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to follow me, uh, on Twitter during the game, uh, it, follow me on at two underscore pad. And that's it for this one. I will see you next time.